Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another From the Basement episode. This time around, we're going to be going over publishing in Neverwinter, as promised from last time. We're also going to cover a little bit about star ratings, tips, and reviews. Now, I've done a little bit of work on this off-screen to get it ready. I have filled out the description a little bit more to give people an idea of why is this being published. I want pe people to understand that this is not a joke dungeon, that there's really a reason why this has been pushed out there. Uh, now, notice the use of hashtags here. Hashtags are sort of a community-driven effort to give people a better way of trying to find content, because currently there's not really a lot of search options. And so the hashtags are a way the community has of finding this information. And here's a list of the currently accepted community tags. Um, by no means are you limited to just these. Uh, you can use whatever tags you want, to be honest. Or not use them. It's, it's purely an optional sort of community-driven thing. But they are there if you wanted to use them. And as the description here mentions, I have added in annotations to this map. So if you want to go through and play it in-game, you'll be able to find all the little notes that I uh, dropped in using invisible clickies. Now, before we hit the publish button, we want to do a final check on quality. You'd want to go back in and check your story. Uh, make sure that you don't have any default text like this here. I've got the default go to next map. You, you really don't want to have that. I, I would want to replace this with, you know, enter the dungeon or something like that. You know, check this map transition. Leave the dungeon. Awesome. You now make sure that you don't have you know, any default text left. Do a final pass on your maps. Make sure everything looks okay. Check your dialogue trees. Uh, you would want to go in and, you know, on all of your dialogues, do a control A, control C, pop over to your word editor of choice, paste it in. Make sure you have no spelling errors. It's these little little things like spelling errors and grammar, grammar mistakes that will really detract away from a player's experience in your dungeon. Of course, check your costumes and check your items, of which we have none for this video. All right, once you've done your final quality check, make sure you save your work, and then you can hit the publish button. Now, this takes a little bit of time to do. You get a little box here telling you that this is a, a server-side operation. You tell it yes, it's going to come here and it's going to say starting quest publish and you're going to have to wait, you know, 10, 20 seconds or so for the server to exchange data and we're done. Sort of. It's now been fired off to the server and the server is now responsible for processing this. Until we get a message notifying us that our quest publish is done, it's not going to be visible. Also, notice it tells us right here that we are currently publishing. Until that changes to published, this is not going to be visible in-game. So, while we're waiting for that, and that can take five-ish minutes or so, um, if the server is getting hammered like it is right now because I'm recording this on the night of open beta, uh, it could potentially take longer than five or six minutes. So, we'll see. If it takes too long, we'll do a video cut and come back in once it's done. All right, reviews, ratings, stars, tips. What is this stuff over here? Well, as people play your quest, they will be given the option to rate it if they complete it. You'll only get ratings if your quest is completed. And you'll be able to see here on this chart which rating, how many ratings of each that you have gotten. These are averaged out by some mystical magical formula to get your average star rating. I'm not joking about the mystical magical formula. I don't think really anybody in the community fully understands how cryptic rates the stars. Suffice to say, five stars are good, one stars are bad, but a single one star rating won't cripple your uh, your average rating score. Tips here shows you the total amount of tips you have received for this adventure, this quest. It doesn't show you the current amount of tips you have available to withdraw. Um, but it does show you the total number of tips. Oh, and wow, that went very surprisingly fast. We're done. Notice here, it now tells me that it's published. It tells me when I published this adventure. The Submit to Cryptic button, as the pop-up here indicates, this is you saying that I think my quest is really awesome and should be a featured quest. 
Uh, Cryptic only features two quests a week, so the competition for this is a little bit fierce. But, uh, you yeah, know, never hurts to try. Now you click that and you'll submit your quest to Cryptic for featuring. Keep in mind that if it gets featured, a copy is going to be created and you're not going to be able to edit that copy. Whatever you submit is sort of like frozen in time, so be aware of that. If you find a massive problem with your quest, you can withdraw it and that will pull it off of the available quest list um, on the job boards. You also get this little short code here that uh, users can search for to find your dungeon instead of trying to type in the full name or something like that. Okay, and with that little distraction, coming back down to here, so yeah, tips. You can't withdraw it from here, obviously, because you're not logged on to a specific character. Also, all of your reviews will be listed here as well. Keep in mind that somebody can rate your dungeon and not give you a review. If they give you a review, they have to rate you, but the reverse is not true. They can give you a star, they can rate you, but not review you. So keep in mind that the numbers up here are not going to match the numbers down here. All right, now, our dungeon has been published. So let's see how we can find this inside of the editor, or not inside of the editor, apologies, inside of Neverwinter. Because there are a couple of things that get changed once you go from Foundry to Live. Uh, pathfinding is generated for your mobs. Um, patrol routes are gonna work better. Um, wandering will work correctly. And there's potentially a few other things that, you know, could happen. You, you just never fully trust computers. Something might have gotten broke in the publishing process. It's important that you go and you test your quest right away. So let's do a uh, video cut and then come back in when I'm in the game. Okay, and we're back. So we're inside the game now. And we can find our quest. So several different ways. There's a job board. You can run over to the job board to uh, start looking for things. Or you press L to uh, bring up your home screen here, your log, and go to catalog, and you can get to it this way as well. Now sort of to show off the uh, hashtag feature, I do a hashtag search for tutorial. There is my uh, dungeon, my quest. Or I could do a search for my handle and find it that way too. As silly as it may sound, um, I find it useful to subscribe to yourself. So that way, when you go, when you want to test your own material, you can just simply go to subscribed and boom, you know, there's your own stuff right there. This makes for a uh, convenient way of being able to find your own stuff quite easily. Now, one thing I do want to point out is these play counts here. Don't expect these play counts. Now, play count number isn't the reason why you create a quest. The reason why you create a quest, you create a campaign, is because you've got a drive to create and out. As long as you are happy with it, that's good. That's, that's all you need. You know, from my point of view, as long as I've got one player, one person who has played the quest and said they had fun, you know, I am happy at that point. I've done my job. I have provided someone with an entertaining experience. All right, enough touchy-feely stuff. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get into our quest here. So I'm going to go back to subscribe and my cool dungeon. I'm going to accept it like any other quest, and now I can test it to see how well this is going to work for the entire sequence. So I can get to the nearest door here. And I look at this, and yep, sure enough, here is my Dungeon of Doom icon that I can travel to. Now, the thing to keep in mind for playing your own content. You are allowed to play your own content. Um, it will increase its uh, play count, but of course you cannot rate your own content. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's not really gonna hurt anything, but it's not going to help anything either. And here's the little annotations that I was talking about, little clickies that I have uh, 
put out everywhere. So I can come in here and see uh, how the encounter is going to work. Yeah, it looks like everything's working pretty good. I I have I can't leave loot behind, especially on a live character. It's like if, if something drops, I have to pick it up. That's uh, just the way I'm hardwired. Yep. And dragon shields are now proceeding to uh, my tail here a little bit. Stop that! Bag of balls. And we can go through and just test to make sure that everything's working. The ma main thing that I want to test is uh, the additional uh, fight that we put in right towards the end. I didn't really uh, test that very effectively in the editor. So I want to reach that fight and make sure that it's going to work as intended. Okay. I see them. I charge in. Yep. And sure enough, I got the guys on the side and they are attacking. Uh, never really quite sure about the range, the distance on things, so I was, you know, not 100% sure that was going to work as intended, but it did. And I've got a bunch of barrels over here I can try and kick around. Oh, yeah, that's right, you can't kick them around inside dungeons, so yeah, they're just there, static. Oh, you know, I forgot to move that guy. Too late now. I think I just completely whiffled with that attack. And just, you know, for fun, massive overkill. Oh, yay, runestone. Now, that is the nice thing about the foundry. Of course, if you're watching these videos, you probably already know that, but now the uh, loot scaling to your level and everything is really quite nice. And of course, we've got the worm priest over here doing his best to make life difficult. And of course, the sly blades are hammering the heck out of me. Yeah, it looks like everything is working correct. We've got a, uh, a nice, challenging little fight here that would probably go a lot smoother if I was paying a little bit more attention to fighting as opposed to uh, talking. And oh. I missed something in the quality check. This is why you always, always, always have to go back through and test your levels again and again and again. Um, I wish I could pass this off as intentional, but no, I honestly did forget to go back and change this from scroll pile zero one. You don't want that. That will take away from people's experience. So now I would have to go back in, change that, and republish it. Um, instead, that actually looks like a, a very good spot to put an annotation note there. So I will do that instead. And finally, let's test to make sure the rewards are working. Probably should alter that so I'm like kneeling down. It lasts a little bit shorter. Okay, there's my chest. Grab my chest. Accept. Quest objectives complete. And press F to go to next map. I could have sworn I had that changed, but there's another one to change. And so, yay, everything works as it should. Life is wonderful. You have quests published now if you've been following through and doing these things with the video. There's, of course, far, far, far more that you can do with the Foundry. And uh, future episodes of From the Basement shall uh, deal with those topics. Until then, happy adventuring.